Hello friends, neighbors, John your neighbor here. Welcome to the Nook. Welcome to Sunday. So it is Sample Sunday. This will be the highlight of our conversation. What is this? Well, this is an 18 year old Knob Creek sent to me from Jeff, Whiskey Explorer or Whiskey Explorer One on Instagram. You're, you're an amazing friend, sir. Thank you for thinking of me. This is hard to come by, an 18 year old Knob Creek. And I thought, this is dropping just right. I'm a couple of videos in to 18 year old scotches. What about an 18 year old bourbon? Sadly, I have no other 18 year old bourbons to compare to. And since it's a Knob Creek episode, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna lead with some quick thoughts of the regular Knob Creek, nine year old. Then we're gonna do the main event, the 18 year old. And then I will wrap up. I've got this single barrel from Ryan Egg in here in Wine and Beyond, and this is a 14 year old bourbon. So it's no slouch in terms of age. What does age do? How does it affect Knob Creek? I am very excited to find out. Pour some Knob Creek or any older bourbon. Come on back. Three, four. Well, as I said in the opener, this will be a, a big Knob Creek episode. The highlight is this 18 year old, but I'm gonna start with just this regular bottle of Knob Creek nine year old. I know I've talked a lot about Knob Creek, uh, but I really literally ran out and got this bottle so I could do a comparison. I mean, we're talking exactly twice the age. We start here at nine years and we're gonna go right to 18. This is 50%. It is from Jim Beam. Um, in my market, you know, this continues to be a great value sits on the shelf. I ran on and got it regular price, sadly no sale for 42 bucks Canadian. I've seen it go down to 35 on sale, which makes it just, you know, an age stamp 50% if you like the profile. So I'll give you some quick thoughts on what I think when I pour a dram of Knob Creek, but the regular nine year old. Lots of good bourbon notes here. We've got some spicing, some cinnamons. Uh, for me, some candied red apples. So it's that sweetness, but with some, some fruit, like a nice red apple. Give it a taste. Cheers. As an entrance bourbon or a bourbon on the shelf, this is great. Um, it's got a good interplay for me about cooked brown sugars, some oaks already in the palate, but certainly now I'm talking short finish. Um, spicing tends to stay not too hot, more in the cinnamon range. Um, and, and then, oh boy, I like I like this Knob Creek nine-year-old, especially for an affordable bourbon. Is there some Jim Bing nuttiness? There is. Is it overwhelming? No, this is not uh, Old Tub. This is not, um, even Old Grant, like there's other ones that give me more uh, peanut note than Knob Creek. Knob Creek tends to give me some cherry or some apple, brown sugar, decent amount of oak structure, it's a little bit bitter on the back end. It, it could have a little more spice breadth palette uh, and it doesn't have a lot of toffee. It tends to be more sweet baked apple than that. But I am a fan. This is a regular bourbon for me. Uh, for the price around here, I mean, it's a three and three quarter bourbon for sure. Okay, time for the main event and I don't have a bottle. So there's no point pointing at the bottle cam. Uh, this came to me, as I said, you know, from Jeff Whiskey Explorer. So thankful. Uh, and you should run over there and he's got the bottle and the special wooden cask or, or, or enclosure it comes in, which is pretty cool. But this is an 18 year old special release. I think this is the 2022 edition. It's also at 50% ABV. So I imagine there's been significant, you know, cask selection from where in the warehouse they want it, not just exactly another nine years but it is twice the age that we have on this excellent entrance release now i've heard that if you can find it and it's hard to find you know we go from a a 40 40 to 50 dollar canadian bottle to, to 300 300 us even in some places this is not an easy to find bourbon but it's older it's darker. I definitely should have had some, some whiteness. It's not like crazy darker, but you can see it, it is dark. And of course, being straight bourbons, everything in here is natural. So if the color is darker, it's pulling more out of that oak. Let's give this a nose and taste. Now that is interesting. I find a little breadth to the spice palette, a little less apple on the nose and a little more 
peanut. A little more nut. Yeah, this is a little more confectionery sugar. This is a little... Oh, this uh, layers of spicing and baking. And when I said here I had some cooked brown sugar, here it's that, you know, cooked sugars in with pastry. It's got that, that extra layers that go on. But, but I have to say, it's rich. My mouth is watering. But what I'm saying is there is a little more Jim Beam nuttiness in this than the regular nine, at least for my palate. Let's give this a sip. Cheers. It clearly and, and right away is a richer experience. It, uh, even though we're saying maybe V and whatnot, it, it coats across the mouth more, with much more breadth of spices here. Um, some not just cinnamons, a little cracked pepper, a little bit of slight, not ginger, um, what's that spice? Maybe a little bit of nutmeg. Um, it's, it's richer, like it's, uh, it's got significantly more oak. Uh, now I'm in the early palate, so we've got uh, a more oak bracing. It's got a little more char level to it. Not quite enough to say that it's smoky, but more to say like it, it fills your, your palate and almost like you, you can you can sense that charred oak. Um, like you feel it, you almost smell it more uh, in that long finish because that's when it's evaporating more and playing in your palate. Definitely not creamier, but but fuller in the palate. It's a struggle not to say smoother. I don't know why that's such a curse word in our industry because what I would say is it's coating my palate better. It, it, um, it's granting, it's tasting more. Granting sounds like the wrong word. Um, and it just feels better in the palate. Swallows nicer. It's not as hot uh, down here. Like, like here, this is a great bourbon, but it, it's a hug. This, I'm not getting that hug. Clearly, I'm predisposed to like this. I've seen Jeff's thoughts, and he also really loved it. And, and I'm a Knob Creek. Um, I like Knob Creek. And so I'm going to try again and try to get more flavors for you. This is all that I've got, so I'm going to try another sip. Really savoring that second one. It still has a nice juxtaposition of, of more oak backing, some char, broader spice palette, a little bit of cracked peppers in some ways spicier in with a darker fruit. Jeff said, you know, I think dark cherry and, and I, I fully agree. This is a ripe, full Bing cherry, more than just a crisp apple. It's got really nice cherry notes. The extra peanut or nut on the nose is not as present in the palate. Uh, and, and might not even be that expressive for you. I was just gonna go on contrast. I wanna savor this last uh, little bit after, probably while I'm editing. Um, so now I'm gonna just quickly go back and compare to the 12 year. Just a quick back, uh, I said 12 year, I meant nine. Uh, here we've got half the age. Less fruit, less richness on the nose. You know, but it's a decent, a little more toffee and caramel, not near the same amount of oak in the conversation. That is one of the, the clearest differences for me. This, a lot more char oak, um, backing those flavors and deeper fruits. Well, I got so excited comparing the 18 to the 9, I forgot I do have a 14-year-old. Now, this is a single barrel pick, uh, barrel 6767, or that's the number of the pick. Ryan Agan did this for Wine and Beyond. Um... This is 60%, which is why I want to leave it at the end. Uh, and I just want to see, you know, 14 years, not that far off 18. And in a direct comparison now, I think I've dialed in my notes on the nine and the 18. What's this 14 like on the nose? Ah, this is a little spicier, a little sharper, um, a little more uh, lighter fruits, like, like uh, a crisper apple. Um, we're not quite like stone fruit, that's not what I'm trying to say, but like where we got rich dark cherry, red apple. This is something cut and brighter. Hmm. Try it on the palate. Cheers. Oh, that is really, really good. But it is spicy and it's actually drier oak. I made a comment very much that the 18 to the 9, you could taste more char, more rich oak. This, almost fresh oak. This is this is not, not quite, you know, sawdust, but what I mean is that, that sweeter vanilla oak, that that um, lighter, not quite popsicle stick oak, but that kind of thing, and spicier, cracked black pepper in with the cinnamons. 
So this is um, the most light oak and spicier. This 18 richest, darkest fruit wrapped up with some char. And the nine, you know what? What a great starting bourbon or entrance bourbon. I really ha don't have a lot of knocks against this one in terms of a you know, 40 to $50 Canadian bourbon. It's top, top notch. Uh, for me, clearly the 18 is, is heads and shoulder above these. And in my other series, I talked about, you know, what do you get for 18 year olds? And the 18 year olds that I have are a little more affordable 18 year olds. So it's not really a good comparison about like how good can 18 year olds be, but it's like, okay, um, should you spend a little bit more money and get a value 18 or should you spend that money into a better, maybe lower age stamp whiskey? And in Scotch right now, those whiskeys are telling me, spend your money in some integrity malts here. <laughs> maybe you and a few friends could go together and find this bottle. If you like bourbon, even more if you like Knob Creek and you're looking for a special purchase, this 18 year old dram, I'm gonna savor every moment later and i have to thank jeff this is an experienced whiskey this is one that i suggest it's only a tasting but it clearly is the best one in this lineup followed by the 14 um that i would say yeah might be time to uh, go in with a few friends get a bottle share a night thank you again for joining me hope you guys had a great weekend